Good morning, everybody. My name is Sarah. I hope you guys are having a great day. Um, I'm waiting to see if it warms up a little bit more. I'm still clinging to that hope that I can ride outside because the winds are really mild. We're not going to break freezing today, but the real field temperature might be just warm enough that I can bundle up and get outside. But in the interim, uh, I wanted to show you guys a little something. It's actually courtesy of one of my subscribers who uh, commented down below. Um, it's going to show you how to hack Zwift. So for those of you who are stuck inside riding today, this might help you customize your experience a little bit more and do some of the stuff that you like on Zwift. Get rid of some of maybe uh, the nuisances, even some of the criticisms that I had um, in my Zwift review. Some of them are somewhat uh, addressed by this little bit of a hack. So I'm going to bring you over to my computer. You guys can follow along and I'll show you this quick little program that can be uh, added to your computer so that you can customize your Zwift. <music> Okay, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to go to this website, the Zwift Hacks website. It's zwifthacks.com slash Zwift hyphen preferences. I have it linked down in the show notes below. Uh, I am not in the interest of uh, sending you guys to a virus page or anything like this. This is just something that I want to share um, that might help you guys out. This is perfectly legitimate. I have run this on my computer. It's a very simple program. It's not even really a program as much as it is a script handler. And what this program basically does is it uh, edits the XML scripts in the background, which run Zwift. It's basically editing the programming in the back end in a way that's been tested so that you can kind of uh, tweak some of the settings that you aren't necessarily able to access or you cannot access them easily from uh, Zwift specifically. So this um, program, it's got a very simple user interface. You can see that here. You can read through this page yourself. Um, there's an area that says prerequisites for Windows PC um, and there's obviously having the Zwift program and then there's this uh, mention of auto hotkey. Um, go ahead and disregard this because they've added something down here below. It's it's new and you can download this compiled version. This means you don't have to go through and find this auto hotkey and download that. If you just download this compiled version right here, it's going to be a one-stop shop for you and then you click on this. Now it's going to bring you to a Dropbox link. Uh, this is just what they've used to manage their downloads here. Um, so you may or may not have seen this before. But what's going to happen is you're going to hit download. And there's an option to log into your Dropbox account. Um, I'm not going to use Dropbox. I'm going to download it right to my computer. And right down here at the bottom, it does say no thank you or no thanks continued download. So if you just click on that, you don't have to sign in. You can sign in to use your Dropbox if you do choose to. Um, but it's not necessary. So down in the lower left hand corner, uh, it's very quick executable. Um, uh, you can go ahead and trust this publisher. It is not, like I said, a virus. And then here you can set your destination location. It's going to default uh, to your documents folder and create a folder there. Um, it really doesn't matter where you put it. Uh, it. It'll run regardless of where you put it. But I just left it as the default for now and I can move it later if I choose to. So go ahead and click next. Uh, I got this warning that it already exists. I'm just going to go ahead and download over it so you guys can kind of follow along. And then you can rename this folder if you wish. It's gonna be called Zwift Scripts. I thought that that was perfectly uh, fine and appropriate. And then go ahead and click Next, and then it just gives you your uh, ready to install confirmation page, and go ahead and click Install. Um, so that is all set and finished. There is not an option to auto run. So what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to go in to your uh, documents page here and uh, scroll down to Zwift. And then under the scripts folder right here, um, this is going to be right here, your zwiftpreferences.exe. Your executable file is going to be uh, what you use to open it. Um, I would recommend that if you think you're going to use this quite a bit, maybe send a shortcut over to your desktop or wherever you open Zwift from so that you can open this and you can change this on a regular basis or you can set it and forget it. So when you open it up, you get um, just a very simple user interface here. So we'll start on the left. You have your trainer effect here. Now this will pull what you currently have set up in Zwift. So right now I have my trainer effect uh, cranked up to 100%. Uh, you can leave it that way. If you don't have it cranked up in the system, you can actually edit that here. It's your one-stop shop. Uh, you can come down here and use one of the presets or you can move this um, 
you know, scroller over here left to right, and you can set it to wherever you choose. Um, and then there's this checkbox for Neo Road Feel. I did try one ride on this, and I do think that it makes even more of a difference on some of the lower gradients. This trainer effect, when I set this up to 100%, I definitely noticed a difference when you were exceeding 8%. But this Neo Road Feel, to me, you know, subjectively, and just on one ride, it seemed to make those lower gradients around, you know, 3 to 6% a little bit more accurate to the real road so i would recommend giving that a, a check if you have a smart trainer that might uh, help give you a more immersive experience uh, the next thing is world um, now you can choose whatever world you want to be on it tells you what the current calendar world is so if i open zwift right now watopia is going to be available to me i can actually choose which one of these I want. So I can choose Richmond, and when I open Zwift, Richmond will be available to me. Now, there are hacks out there that allow you to edit the back end of the XML to open up all worlds all the time. It involves typing in some coding. It's not necessarily something that many people are comfortable with. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna show you how to use this program. And if you wanted to specifically do, you know, the UCI Worlds co course on a Tuesday and only Watopia was available, just pop this thing open, click on Richmond and go ahead and save your changes. So I'm gonna leave it on follow calendar for right now. And then the nice thing they have over here is they've got the list of all the courses in case you don't remember which one's available where. And what you could do is you can actually click on them and it'll give you some route details. So it kind of gives you your distance for the full course. It gives you your elevation gain. So you can at least have an idea of whether it's flat, hilly. It doesn't give you a two dimensional terrain map, but if you do click on this read more here, It'll link you over to the Zwift blog website, and it'll actually give you some details about the route, the Strava segment, things like that. Um, you know, this this little terrain map here, which is kind of uh, neat. It's a little more difficult to read, I think, than just a general 2D, but they do have it here. So in case you're curious about it, uh, you can see it uh, pretty quickly. So I'm going to go back to the uh, Zwift preferences now. And everything on this page, you know, it's, it's all repeated from one course to the next. The other tab you have up here is your miscellaneous tab. And these are more general settings. So you can set your window width and height. Uh, I would recommend this for people who might want to use Zwift in tandem with Trainer Road or another program or maybe Sufferfest videos or whatever you're doing. You can actually custom your window height and width so that you can size it to your screen and uh, you can run two things at the same time. You can set the uh, settings to full screen, uh, minimal user, user interface and minimal leaderboards. What these do is they basically clean up the interface a little bit so they can pull out the leaderboards. They pull out that clutter from the main screen if you don't want it there. Um, if you're using the mobile the mobile app, uh, the controller that you can put on your tablet or your phone, you might not need that or want that there. Then you can actually see all the, you know, the nice graphics and scenery that they program in there and just monitor your metrics right from your tablet. Um, they don't bother me too much, so I'm just going to leave these all checked off for now. This is your uh, volume uh, panel here. Your ambient is going to control your music, so that really irritating music on the uh, front end of the program when you first open it up. Uh, I crank that all the way down because it's really obnoxious and I'm trying to get you know my Spotify or something opened up to play music while I'm riding so I can get rid of the extra clutter there uh, I leave this this is your sound effects here I leave this on you know I, I like the sound of the rain and the cobbles and, and some of the background noises and you can adjust that volume and you could do this right from the app too but the nice thing is that this is all your settings all in one and if you're thinking about it and you want to adjust it you don't have to actually go in enter a ride find the menu screen it's all right here and you could do that before you even open up Zwift and then this announcer I've actually never heard an announcer um, so I have it turned all the way down it looks like the default is all the way down because I never touched that and then obviously you've got some more presets down here if you just want to real quick click a button and, and everything will just preset all the way down uh, you've got your workout uh, options here. This is your use erg mode. So for those of you who have smart trainers, uh, you can turn that on or off. I think the default is on. Uh, I do not use erg mode. Uh, this is a personal preference. There's a lot of debate amongst cyclists about whether erg mode is a good thing. I do not personally believe erg mode is a, a good way for at least me to train. Uh, I would prefer to just let the trainer control the resistance based on the terrain on the road. And then I have to think and, and shift and use uh, you know my cadence and my leg muscles to adjust to reach the power that is being dictated on top of the screen but I don't want my my trainer to push me down to 
50 watts to try to, or uh, 50 RPM to try to reach the desired wattage, especially if I'm at a point in the in my workout that maybe I'm not able to attain that power anymore and the erg mode is going to try to force me there you know if you want to sometimes you train to failure uh, and this might not allow you to um, you know keep your cadence at an effective level um, and then edit in watts if you're going to create your own workout this is uh, something that allows you to edit your workouts in watts I usually just edit it in zones uh, most people I think will but if you want something real specific or um, maybe you're doing an FTP test and you want to set exact wattages or something that might be effective for you uh, power smoothing this is just your power readout um, honestly it's not something that bothers me I just leave it checked uh, off it doesn't bother me that the power jumps around it does the same thing on my computer because power is variable so I don't really need the power smoothing uh, set to on but that's something you can set if you choose and then your miscellaneous your profanity filter and your ignore God messages these are for your um, chat function messages I've honestly only ever seen like two people send a message in all the times that I've used Zwift um, I, I've said this in my Zwift review I think the chat function is pretty much a, a moot point I think that just they should just chuck it and then when they can get some uh, voice uh, availability for chat you know maybe try to introduce that a little bit at a time so once you're done setting all of your settings that you want to set um, you know you can hit submit and this will automatically close up in the upper left hand fo uh, folder there's just some very uh, quick options here you know help other file um, this won't really unlock anything specific but just to note that they are up there so I'm gonna hit click or click submit and this is going to close out and then I'll be ready to open up Zwift and as soon as I open up Zwift uh, it will have all my new settings uh, preset in there for me. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. Uh, thank you to Mark for the uh, suggestion down below. I'm glad I checked it out. It did kind of clean some stuff up for me and it's a way to kind of edit some preferences. Like I said, there's more hacks out there uh, if you want to go ahead and add really simple lines of coding. But I know some people don't like to play around with stuff like that. But check it out. Zwift blog website is definitely great. Um, I've seen a lot of good articles in there. I haven't even spent a whole lot of time on there, but they've definitely outlined a lot of stuff and it's all verified, good quality articles. It'll just help you maximize on your training if you use Swift as a primary platform. Um, you know, things that you can just do to make the experience a little bit better until, you know, Zwift gets into uh, the mode where they're able to actually include all this stuff into the platform because it's not easy. I mean, programming these are not easy. You know, we're all a bunch of critics and we can all say, well, this would make it better. And that's all well and good. But execution is obviously a lot more, uh, a lot more difficult than theory. So, uh, you know, until that point, there's a lot of hacks and, and things that you can find to uh, enhance your use of Zwift. Well, it's cold. Sun's peeking out just a touch, but uh, I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm gonna get outside and I'm gonna ride my bike. I'm gonna try to keep it on some moderate terrain because as much as climbing warms you up, what goes up must kind of come down and then you freeze your ass off. So I'm gonna try to keep it somewhere in between so I don't, uh, don't freeze to death. I'm hoping to maybe do an hour and a half more if it's not too cold out. I'm gonna keep it close to home so I've got some bailouts if it gets, uh, gets a little sketchy out there. Are you going for a ride? Yeah? Okay, get dressed. I'm about 15 miles in. I'm actually pretty comfortable temperature-wise. I was gonna head up that way 
do another 20 miles of climbing, but uh, in waiting for it to get a little warm outside, I kind of squandered away some daylight and the sun's gonna set in about an hour. Being the bad planner that I am, I don't have my headlight, and I also didn't bring any emergency nutrition, so 20 miles of climbing might be a bad idea. So I'm just gonna turn around, head home, make it a quick out and back, probably about a two hour ride, maybe a little bit more if I noodle around as I get a little closer too. But uh, yeah, not bad. I'm excited to be outside. I'm sure I won't be so lucky tomorrow. home sweet home um, I had to actually slow down on the way home because it has, it's a slight descent on the way back and the wind was getting a little bit cold and the fact that the Sun was starting to go down it was starting to get cold air out anyway so I was about two hours and ten minutes for like almost 31 miles not a super fast pace but got some decent work in mostly zone 2 zone 3 so I have to blow my nose really bad, but I'm gonna jump in the shower, warm up a bit, and uh, figure out what I wanna do with the rest of the day. All right, shower done. Uh, I've decided um, that my roommate and I are gonna go see Patriots Day. It's been out for a few weeks, so shouldn't have a problem getting a seat this time in the uh, lovely recliners that they have at Regal. But uh, I'm gonna put some laundry away, and then I'm gonna go to the movies. No, this is how you break your neck. I'm ready to go. home from the movies um, if you guys haven't seen Patriots Day it's actually a very good movie I think they did a really good job giving respect and honor to uh, both the officers that were involved in the investigation as well as uh, the victims of uh, the Boston Marathon bombing um, they actually consulted all those people and used them to help develop characters and storylines and things like that so um, it was definitely a very touching and effective movie. Um, the last few minutes of the movie they did a montage of interviews with um, some of the victims, uh, survivors, and some of the officers and their uh, thoughts and opinions of uh, both the event and the aftermath. And at the very end they show showed some pictures of the individuals who died. And um, they were playing some music at the end and they ended with the photo of the eight-year-old boy who died and the music had stopped and right after they showed a picture of the eight-year-old boy they uh, popped up a you know a dedication message about the movie and it was probably up on the screen for 10 seconds but in that 10 seconds there was not a single sound in the entire theater there's probably 50 or so people in that theater and not a person moved I don't think anybody breathed and it was probably one of the most emotional 10 seconds that I can ever even remember and that's sitting in a movie theater and I'll probably remember that for a long time you know we're talking about even you know young kids in the movie like you know high school age even middle school age they're off from school tomorrow and these these kids are sitting in there and, and giving respect and deference to the importance of the message that's being conveyed in this movie so uh, I think they did an excellent job and if you haven't seen it yet I recommend you go see it, and if you have seen it, let me know what you think in the comments below. But I'm going to end the vlog here, get ready to go to bed. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.